Well, good afternoon to you, and thanks for joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. And it is great to welcome to the program Jaris Ham. She is someone that has quite a bit of ministry background. She's written for many Christian magazines, including Ideals, as well as Clubhouse from Focus on the Family. She's also a chaplain with Marketplace Chaplains, and she is an author, and she has written a book for well, you would call them the middle grade students. Middle grade fantasy is the genre. And the book is called The Secret of the Seven Rubies. Jaris Ham joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio, a book that actually has been nominated for the Southern Christian Writers Conference Notable Book Awards. And Jaris, it is great to have the opportunity to chat with you this afternoon here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Thanks for coming aboard. Well, thank you, Bob, for having me on the radio and allowing me to uh, reach out to all your listeners there. Well, let's begin just by talking about this concept of the book. It's called The Secret of the Seven Rubies. It's a middle, it's oriented toward the middle grade area or the age group, what would that consist of? Okay, your middle graders are usually uh, children between the ages of uh, in fourth grade to the eighth grade. Um, they're not quite kids anymore, and they're not quite in the teenage years yet, so they're kind of caught in between. So they have the nickname of being the tweeners, but they are typically the middle grade and junior high students. And you actually have a background in teaching. You have taught junior high as well as high school. So tell me, with respect to the book, The Secret of the Seven Rubies, why is it that you really wanted to write a book for that age group? Well, I really have a heart for this age group, and it all begins with my own children when they were in junior high school. Um, I had... um, you know, I was able to read some books to them, all the Narnia books by C.S. Lewis and those books. But when we were done with those, I went to look for other Christian books for this age group, and I really couldn't find that many. Uh, there were a few. There were some by uh, Frank Peretti had some books mm-hmm. at that time for this age group. and um, But it was really, they were few and far between. So I had that little seed planted in my heart when my own kids were in um, junior high school. And I thought, you know, someday I'm going to write a book. I'm going to try to write a book for this age group. So if you would, please give us an idea about the concept of the book. Okay, this is in a nutshell. It's about an eighth grade boy who uses the wisdom of seven rubies to rescue his friends from a mesmerizing video game and also to save his grandfather from a dangerous trap. Um, eighth grader Matt Silvers is the main character. He's like us. He never has enough time. You know, if you remember that uh, time in your own life, you don't have time to open your locker, to rush to class, to catch the bus. You don't have time to finish your homework. And uh, this particular young boy really wants to win a basketball championship. So he needs time to impress a, uh, his coach before this big game comes up. Um But time is going to stand still for Matt and his friends, Ryan and Julie, as they journey to a realm of wonder. This is a kingdom where a wise guardian reveals Matt's superhero identity, and he challenges them to find seven rubies with seven messages. And this is the secret wisdom they'll need to battle the swarming craven and resist the evil dark void. So that basically is what the book is about. Well, you are listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio. Jaris Ham is joining us today. We're talking about the secret of the seven rubies. And so you have this main character. His name is Matt, and he wants to win a basketball championship. I understand, though, that Matt might have some, well, uh, barriers, <laughs> if you could say it yeah. like that, to accomplishing that particular dream, right? Right. Well, he's like all of us when we were in that age group. You know, uh, it's kind of an awkward age. It's kind of we we don't really know about our appearance or what we're good at and are self-conscious about a lot of things. And um, one of Matt's obstacles is that he's on the basketball team. He really wants to do well, but 
he's kind of short for a basketball player. Um, so he has that to overcome. And he's in eighth grade this year, the um, year that the book takes place. But in the previous year, he feels responsible that his team lost the championship because he fouled at the end of the game. And the other mm. team was able to make the extra point. They won. So this whole eighth grade year, he's been carrying that, you know, load on him that he has to redeem his reputation on the ball court. So that's how the book starts out. All right. So you have these three young people, Matt, Julie, and Ryan, and they are, well, they're concerned about their friends and the video games, as I understand it. And somehow right. they're transported into Either they're transported into the world of the video game or the world of the video. They become absorbed in the world of video game. And some of that actually comes into the reality where they're where they live. So if you would kind of unpack that for me, if you would. OK, well, <laughs> actually, they're not absorbed into the video game. Okay. Uh, they have a, a supernatural visitor named Jasper. He's this otherworldly warrior who guards the land of Cornopia. Uh, he chooses earthly partners to take part in his quest. And um, Jasper is in charge of match training. In, this, um, in the Wonderland of Canopio, the kingdom of Canopia, um, there's a battle going on between good and evil. And Jasper brings Matt a ruby and a chest. And he says, you have to seek the wisdom of the seven rubies in order to enter Karnopia and to get the wisdom that you need to battle these evil cravens that are in, invading your hometown. Hmm. And the method through which the craven is invading is through these video games, correct? Right, right. They have an evil leader named Slag who's influencing this uh, video programmer, game programmer, to insert these images into this video game, and the images and uh, the game is actually mesmerizing Matt's friends. They're hypnotized by it. Mm. So Matt and his friends battle them on the um, in the earthly realm, but also in the supernatural realm of Canopia. Well, you talk about the impact of these video games. It doesn't sound too much. Unlike, you can certainly draw the parallel or connect the dots to the negative impact that screens and video games actually have on young people today, no doubt. Right, right. As a mother and a grandmother, I've been concerned about this ever since Mario started out several years ago. Um, I think video games can be a lot of fun and entertaining, but I think we also have to be on guard. Actually, Matt's parents in the book own a video game, but the games that they put out are good and they're fun and they're entertaining. But then they have this one employee that begins to be influenced uh, to put bad images into the game. Actually, he tries to steal the game from them, and he is the one that um, downslo downloads this game to a disc and gives it to the kids, and uh, they're playing this game and becoming hypnotized. So Matt has to reveal what's going on to his dad and get his dad to believe him. You know, yeah, the game that you created, it's actually being pirated and turned into this bad game that um, is mesmerizing my friends. So he has a lot of different levels that he's fighting on. Jarris Ham is joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. We're talking about this middle grade fantasy book called The Secret of the Seven Rubies. And the seven rubies are introduced to Matt through this otherworldly character named Jasper. So right. the, the seven rubies, it seems like to me, is really the vehicle, if you will, to introduce some of these biblical principles. So What's the purpose of the seven rubies? In other words, what will Matt accomplish as he integrates these seven rubies into his life? Okay, well, the first ruby, uh, they go into this fantasy world, and they spend time there, and they are, uh, are given a secret message of wisdom, and they have to come back into their real world and uh, put those, the wisdom of those rubies to walk that out in their lives. So the first ruby is overcome evil with good. 
And, of course, Matt says, well, what's that supposed to mean? You know, he's like your typical kid. What do you mean by that? And uh, Jasper, the wise guardian, tells him, well, be watchful. Look around. Notice the people around you and overcome evil with good whenever you can. So how it is woven into the book story is Matt is typically almost late for school again, and um, he notices a crowd of students, and in the center of a crowd is one of his friends that is physically challenged, and he's in a wheelchair, and his wheelchair is stuck in a crack, and he can't get out, and he's blocking all the kids from getting in the school. So the kids are, you know, bumping his chair, going around him, saying, hurry up, get out of the way, all these things. And Matt starts to go around him, too. And then he says, wait, you know, overcome evil with good. So he goes back and he helps his friend, you know, out of the crack in the sidewalk into the school. So what Matt has to do is when he receives these messages of wisdom, uh, he goes back to his everyday world and fulfills it in his everyday life. And so that becomes the pattern for the other rubies as well, right? Right, right. That's the pattern. They receive a ruby, they enter the fantasy world, they receive a message of wisdom, come back to their real world, and put that uh, ruby into practice. Would you mind just taking us through? These are tremendous principles. I'm looking at a list right now of these seven rubies. Share Mm -hmm. with us these other principles, if you would. Well, uh, of course, the first one is overcome evil with good, and then whatever is good, true, pure, and lovely, think on these things. It's more about the thinking. Uh, The next one is do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. Uh, And then one um, at the conclusion of the first book is love never fails, and then coming up will be faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. Uh, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And the last one is be strong and courageous. So these are all, uh, you know, truths from the Bible that we're familiar with. But, um, you know, and they're woven into the story in very natural ways, I believe. So you mentioned, let me see, if, I, if I'm if i counting correctly, there are four out of the seven that are covered in this book, The Secret of the Seven Rubies. Right. The first four are in the first book. Uh, The next two will be in the second book, and then the last one will be in the last book. So any idea with respect to the release of the second book and the timing? Uh, The second book should come out this summer, um, early summer. Jarris Ham is joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio, and we've been talking about the secret of the seven rubies and some of the biblical principles that are introduced to middle grade readers in this particular novel. So how do you make the connection between these seven rubies, these seven principles, and really what young people are experiencing today. In other words, what's the application of this wonderful biblical truth, the Christian worldview perspective? Right. Um, I think a lot of it centers around this second ruby. Whatever is good, true, pure, and lovely, think on these things. Um, There's so many things in media right now for young people that are just negative. Uh, They're not, um, according to the Christian worldview, they can be depressing. Um, they don't really give encouragement. And I think encouragement and positive things are something that kids really need right now in their lives. I, and I think it's one of the major things that we as parents, you know, are concerned about is all the media influences, uh, whether it's television, movies, um, screens, you know, screen time, the internet things like that, we realize there's much more pressure on them than probably um, than my generation I know. Um, So that's one of my main concerns is their thinking. And as you began to write this book and develop the story, how were you able to really, I guess you might say, get into the mind, the brain of a middle grade student and communicate with him or her effectively? Okay, well, most of it, first of all, it comes from being in middle grade myself. You know, all of us can remember those years that were kind of awkward and 
you know, transition from uh, childhood to adulthood. So I, I do remember that a lot of the basketball um, part of it comes from my own um, children. They played basketball in junior high, and two of them were in a state tournament. Um, so it comes from my experiences as a mother watching them play um, and also from having students that are that age. And just recently, I was able to um, go to a meeting for young authors, and it was middle grade students that liked to write. And we as authors um, were reading some of the stories that they wrote, and it really gave me a perspective mm. into um, – how children today are thinking and the things that are influencing their choices. So, uh, yeah, I love middle grade and I just really want to be there for them. That's great. Jarris Ham joining us today here in the meeting house on faith radio and Jarris, how can people connect with you online? Well, I do have a website, jarrisham.com. And also uh, my books are on Amazon. And if you go to your local Christian bookstore, You can find the book there or else they can order it for you. And it can also be ordered, you know, through Barnes & Noble and places like that through Ingram. So um, as far as personally, you can go to my website. And also, um, I have a prequel to my book that's free. If you go to my website, you can download an e-book. So that's just a way that um, the parents, the grandparents, And the readers get to know who I am, the perspective that I'm coming from. And your name is spelled Jerris, J-E-R-I-S, and Ham, H-A-M-M. Jerris Ham joining us today here in the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Jerris, it's been great to learn about not only the plot, the concept of this book, but also the biblical principles that you integrate into it. So thank you so much for spending some time with us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. Well, thank you so much for having me, Bob. It's been a pleasure.